looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 and you also get automatically entered into the M20 booster box giveaway which runs until July 15th. So the idea behind the Sultai Dreadshift deck here is that we're combining Dread Presence alongside Escape Shift and of course we also have some Elemental and Entered Battlefield synergies with the Risen Reef and the Yarok. So the main combo of course is just Dread Presence, 4 mana 3-3 three, three, whenever a Swamp enters the battlefield under our control. We can either draw a card and lose one life or deal 2 damage to any target and gain 2 life. And that means that if we combine it with Escape Shift, sacrifice a bunch of lands, grab a bunch of swamps, we can potentially even kill the opponent on the spot if we have multiple copies of Dread Presence or Dread Presence and Yarok, which also doubles the triggers from Dread Presence. And then the other win condition alongside Scape Shift is, of course, we also have two copies of Field of the Dead, which means that if we have seven lands with different names, we get to make a 2-2 zombie for each land that enters the battlefield. So we can make uh, seven zombies with just seven lands, including one Field of the Dead. And if we can have eight lands to sacrifice to the Scape Shift, we can potentially make um, even more if we grab the second Field of the Dead as well. And of course, with Yarok, that can get out of hand as well since that will also double the triggers provided by uh, Field of the Dead. So we can very quickly make a giant zombie army, thanks to a Scape Shift as well here. And then the rest of the deck is pretty straightforward. We've got some Mana Ramp with Lunar Elves, Leafkin Druid, Grow Spiral, and then uh, the three drops also work quite well with Yarok. We've got Elvish Rejuvenator that can search up an extra land, Risen Reef that can reveal the top card, and if it's a land that goes straight into play, which also combines great with Dread Presence if we put a Swamp in play. And then Risen Reef itself also synergizes greatly with Yarok, since when Yarok itself enters the battlefield, it will trigger the Risen Reef twice for, of course, each Risen Reef in play. And then the Yarok will also synergize with a lot of the other creatures in our deck, like Dread Presence, the Risen Reef, Rejuvenator, and also two copies of Hostage Taker that can steal one of the opponent's uh, creatures or artifacts. And we also have two copies of Tatiova, which further synergizes with Escape Shift, much like the Dread Presence, and also synergizes with Yarok. So just a very synergistic, land-based, elemental-based, Enter the Battlefield-based deck here. And then of course the mana base is kind of the tricky part, since we need to balance having enough swamps for Dread Presence, having enough differently named lands for the Field of the Dead, but still being able to cast our spells on curve, so we still need enough blue sources, enough green sources, to also help us cast the turn 1 ladder elves. So this is currently where I arrived with the mana base. Three swamps, three forests, two drowned catacombs, and then of course we want all the dual lands that are swamps for Dread Presence, so we've got four watery graves, and for Overgrown Tomb, and then also a one of Temple of Malady, which also synergizes with Yarok, letting us scry twice. We've got the four Breeding Pools, two Hinterland Harbor, one Temple of Mystery as another scry land, and two copies of Field of the Dead. So yeah, that's our deck. Let's uh, jump into some games and see how our deck does here. All right, so we're on the play. Yeah, the sand seems fine. It's not the most explosive hand ever, but we've got a Risen Reef to hopefully find us some black mana to eventually cast Yarok. So the ideal sequence here would be finding a black source of, of Risen Reef and then casting a turn for Yarok. And this is actually also interesting, Leaf Kindred. Sometimes it's better to hold it until after we play the Risen Reef. And with this hand, I might actually do so. Just because Leaf Kindred isn't really ramping into anything, maybe Tatiova, but we don't even have more lands in hand to really take advantage. So if they don't kill the Risen Reef, we might be better off just uh, playing the Leafkin Druid afterwards. Alright, now I regret maybe not playing the Leafkin Druid since we might have been able to guarantee a Yarok on turn 4. Like, if Risen Reef reveals a black land and we draw into a Dread Presence, we want to have the Swamp in hand still. Alright, no land, sadly. Just a Grow Spiral. So next turn we can go Leafkin Druid plus Grow Spiral and set up for Yarok. Hopefully Risen Reef will still be around. Alright, so... Pretty nice start from the Boros Feather deck here, with the Dread Horde getting back the Find Strike. Don't really want to chum block with our Risen Reef.
All right, temple. So let's see here. I guess we can growth spiral, see what we draw, put in the overgrown tomb untapped. Yeah, that works. And then uh, play leaf can draw it, play temple. Could also like hold a lance in case we want to play Tatiova, but we're probably just going to play Yarok next turn. So yeah, let's lead with the growth spiral, I think. Not a risen reef. Not our scape shifts. And I think I do want to keep lands. So we currently don't have. I think I'm attacking since I'm not blocking. So we currently don't have a dread presence to uh, go with these scape shifts. But we do have a Tatiova. Although we might just be dead before we get to really assemble anything. Opponents on the black version of Feather. So we'll take four. Alright. We lost our Risen Reef, sadly. So we, we don't get the Enter the Battlefield trigger if we play Yarok. Um, Leaf Kindred only makes a single green. So we could just go Tatiova, play a land, which would be fine. Playing Yarok would give us a reasonable blocker on the ground for the Legionnaire. I think I gotta play Tatiova here. And then I don't think I'm playing the Watergrave untapped since there's not too many cards that we could cast after drawing from Tatiova. Right, not a swamp. I mean, we could also just like uh, scape shift next turn and make a whole bunch of zombies. But uh, we're not really dealing with Feather. That's a flyer here. Tatiova survives, of course, we would also gain seven, draw seven cards. So the plan is probably to scape shift next turn if we can. Leafkin Druid can shun block the Legionnaire pretty easily. So this game would have maybe played out slightly differently had we played the Leafkin Druid on turn two instead of sandbagging it. Although they did end up having the shock for the Risen Reef anyway. So they're not gonna shock. So this is definitely blocking here. The question is, do we block the Arcanist here with Tatiova? So we're taking five. They didn't shock, which is kind of interesting. So that probably means they don't have another shock in hand. Otherwise they would have just burnt us out. Yeah, I think I'm blocking, even though we need the Statyova to survive. Yeah, right, sheltering light, that's fine. So I guess that explains maybe the attack anyway, but... Well, our opponent's got a million cards. Let's see if we can... Um, survive here. All right, so we'll play the Swamp. Now, we can Risen Reef and then Scape Shifts. Even if we still had our Leafkin Druid, we wouldn't have had the mana to Yarok and Scape Shift here, which would have been kind of the dream to double up the zombies. But I guess we'll Risen Reef here. And then scape shifts. Yeah, we'll reveal a land, draw another card. We get to choose what we draw here with Tatiova, but we're gonna draw a million cards in a second anyway. Alright, so just gotta be a little bit careful here with which lands we search up. All right, so let's sack all our lands. We've got eight. So we can get double field of the dead here. And then we just want six other named lands. So one, two, three, four, five, six would do the job. Go 
could have maybe kept more swamps in the deck for future dread presence. But uh they wanna waste too much time deciding. So we will get a zombie army here. We'll gain a bunch of life from Tatiova. Let's see if that's enough. Alright, so there's one Dread Presence, I guess we might as well attack. And what do we discard? Um, probably don't need the third Scape Shift here. Can ditch a Lanner Elves, a non-Swamp Land. Rejuvenator can go, a Gross Spiral can go, and I guess one Leafkin Druid can go. Alright, so we could go Yarok into maybe Hostage Taker or just Hostage Taker play whatever we steal next turn. Although they might have God's Willing to mess that up. Also important to note that we've got some black zombies and then a blue-green Risen Reef, so we can still potentially block through God's Willing giving protection from one of our colors here. If we only had zombies on defense, then protection from black would not let us uh, block potentially. Although, now with Trample, if they give protection from black on the Legionnaire, we would probably still die. So let's see if they have the gods willing. The rest, it's gonna take a Scape Shift. So if they have the gods willing, the Legionnaire, that's basically 10 Trample damage, plus 3 from Feather, and the Arcanist can shoot us for 2 with a Shock from the Graveyard. So we would be dead. So let's see if they have the gods willing here. And wow, her opponent just scoops it up. That was unexpected, but uh, I guess I didn't have the gods willing. Alright, so this hand is a little awkward without the green mana to cast the Leafkin Druids. So we'll mulligan here. And the London mulligan is definitely good for this deck since we're kind of like a combo deck that needs a certain amount of pieces for the deck to function. So getting to uh, have a fresh opening 7 and then put one on the bottom is much better than going down to 6. And this hand seems fine. Uh, interesting decision here what to put on the bottom. Could just be the Grow Spiral since we don't have another land to go with it. That seems reasonable. Although, again, we're faced with the decision of do we want to play the Leaf Kindred on turn 2, or do we sandbag it until after we play Risen Reef. I think I'm gonna just play it on turn 2, especially if we don't draw land. If we do draw land, it gets more interesting. Because then it might pay off to kind of sandbag the Leaf Kindred. Alright, so Overgrown Tomb. So... Yeah, I think I'm tempted to kind of wait here on this Leaf Kindred, which is weird for a mana creature, but... Gotta get our Risen Reef value. Hopefully no Thought Erasures. We'll keep the Swamp in hand for future Dread Presence. But do need one Black Source in play to actually cast it. And next turn we could just play Yarok. Especially if Risen Reef is still in play. Alright, that's too bad. Oath of Kaya kills Risen Reef. I guess I'm still playing Yarok. And now we're just waiting for two more lands in play before we fire off the Scape Shift. The fairy pretty good against Yarok if we don't have Risen Reef in play. If we did still have Risen Reef, then bouncing this would not really accomplish much. Alright, that's a good one to have in our back pockets. So, we could just replay Yarok, but that's not great if they have another removal spell for it. The alternative, I guess, would be just go Leafkin Druid plus Lenor Elves. 
which is also not great since it doesn't pressure Teferi enough to kill it necessarily. So we're in a pretty bad spot here. Losing that Risen Reef definitely hurt. Our best hope is that our opponent plays a creature and we get to hostage taker it. I'll protect you. Five mana, could be big to ferry, tucking Yarok. It's gonna be a D spark instead. Alright, well, we're slowly getting our land set up here for the scape shift at least. Not gonna run out hostage taker without value. I'm sure our opponent has at least one creature in their deck somewhere. Alright, they're gonna wait for end of turn for this Thoderisher, which doesn't make a ton of sense. They probably would have wanted to upkeep that, or uh, rather draw stop it. Add in speed thanks to Teferi. Here goes nothing. But now Scape Shift is gone. They know about hostage taker, so we're probably not winning this one. Unless uh, something strange happens. Alright, let's uh, get in there. Yeah, if you have Yarok in play, Hostage Taker can steal two things. Time for plan B. As soon as I think so, we're actually not too far from just like making zombies with this Field of the Dead if we draw any land here. The only duplicate we have is a forest. So this is also where having some of those one-off lands helps us diversify Might be a bad idea. the names of the lands for Field of the Dead. And there's a Guard Mage. So, right, at least we get a bit of hostage taker value here. If we play another elf, then we can play the guard mage thanks to druid making double green, so that seems fine. Mega zombie. So we're pretty vulnerable to Akaya's wrath here, but. I won't let you win. If they have it, they have it. Alright, they're probably just going to cast the Chaos Wrath at instant speed, to be honest, but we'll find out. So, the decision we have to make here is whether or not the Guard Mage should go at the Fairy or at their face. Probably at their face, if they have like a Tyrant Scorn to bounce this. Then I want to make sure we at least kill the Fairy. I'm not going to send more than 3 power at the Fairy, I don't think, since we're probably going to need all the damage we can get. And yep, it's time wipe instead of Kaya's Wrath. I'll keep the Leafkin Druid in hand in case we find a Risen Reef, since it doesn't really pressure Teferi anyway here. So yeah, what went wrong with this game? I guess uh, the fact that they were able to kill the Risen Reef and we weren't really getting any traction from playing Yarok. And then they first bounce the Yarok with Teferi, which is not a great trade if you're not getting value from the ETB. And then, uh, yeah, sweepers are also decent against us if we don't assemble like a, a scape shift kill. But they had the thought ratio for the scape shift, sadly. So yeah, we're in a bit of a pickle here. Might even be worth it to save the swamp until we find a dread presence or a Tatiova. Because right now we would be making a 2-2 zombie, which sure is something, but it's not going to be enough to really do anything substantial. So we'll just pass a turn. So, we've got a lot of decent draws here between the Scape Shift, the Tatiova, Dread Presence, the Risen Reef. So we're giving ourselves some outs, but our opponent's got a full grip as well here. Alright, 
All right, I guess we can play that one. Taran Scorn deals with the zombie, that's fine. And there's a hero. So they do seem to be on the more mid-range variant, although Time Wipe still plays quite well with something like an Elite Guard Mage that you can pick back up. So maybe better than Chaos Wrath in this build. Another Oath to trigger hero. Alright, and there's a scape shift, so I guess we'll go for it. Player land first, we can float a bunch of mana, but it's not like we're going to do anything with that mana. But I guess it's uh, a good practice. So we want to keep the Field of the Dead in play and then just get a second Field of the Dead here. But we'll float all the other mana. Escape shifts. And hope they don't have another sweep effect. Alright, so let's make sure we have enough different names here. So two, three, four, five, six. And yeah, that should do it. Keep as many swamps in the deck as possible. Probably should have gotten a second scry land here to set up our draw. Resolve all. And Red Presence arrives a little bit late to the party. So I don't know if it's quite good enough. I think we have better draws in our deck with like Risen Reef. And maybe another Hostage Taker would be okay. Yeah, I think I'm bottoming that. And we'll say go. I don't think I'm playing the Leafkin Road in case we draw Risen Reef. Alright, I mean we've got a pretty big zombie army in play, but there's a few cards that deal with our entire army at once. Alright, Tyrant's Scorn is kind of a good sign, means they probably don't have a sweeper. Like Opponent taking two there. You know what? I'm not done yet. So Teferi is threatening ultimates. And looks like our opponent's just gonna try and fight through the zombie army one by one, making chum blockers with the hero, bouncing with the fairy, but yeah, we could potentially just kill them in two turns. Don't even know if I want to bother attacking the planeswalkers here, because our opponent has so many chum blockers out, we would have to waste a lot of damage by going after the planeswalkers. We might be better off just going face two turns in a row. And also not trigger the Oath of Kaya. Narset. That's probably going to find them whatever they're looking for, if not this turn, next turn. And again, if we really want to make sure Narset dies, we would have to send like, I don't know, 5-6 zombies at Narset. Which doesn't seem uh, worthwhile. So I think we're just going face and hope for the best. If they have it, they have it. We're kind of all in here anyway. Alright. And we'll make two more zombies. So our opponent is just chum blocking as much as they can. I guess there's also an argument for not playing this breeding pool in case they do find a sweeper to have a better follow up. 
Although I don't think we're beating an Atefari Emblem post sweeper here, since they can easily manage a zombie per turn. So I think we're all in here. Alright, so does Narset or Teferi draw into an answer? Alright, another Narset for the redraws. So they're gonna make a sweat. Well, I mean, this just goes to show the power of Field of the Dead plus Scape Shift. We don't really have anything going on in our favor. We top decked the Scape Shift with a bunch of lands in play. And we were able to amass quite the army to give us a chance. So let's see whether or not uh, they found an answer. They didn't activate the ferry yet. If they wanted to emblem, they would have done so already, because then they would have been able to exile something with the small Teferi as well when they drew a card. So it probably implies that they haven't found an answer yet and want to keep Hero of Dominaria in case they need to plus to draw into a sweeper if they have one left in their deck. Alright, and Teferi's plussing. Do they top deck it? If they don't, they're probably dead. Narset, alright. And yeah, looks like uh, the zombies got the job done here. Oh, I've done the hero thing so a game that I didn't think we had any chance of winning, we still managed to get here, so that's pretty impressive. Alright, I've got a pretty nice opening hand, especially if the Risen Reef sticks around. Turn on Lenorov's turn to Risen Reef. Hopefully into a turn 3 Yarok. Although Fanatical Firebrand means they already have an answer for either the Elf or the uh, Risen Reef here. But I guess we don't really mind too much if the Elf dies since we have a Leafkin Druid as well. Although here we're also kind of seeing the drawback of playing all these Shocklands since we want all the, sh the black Shocklands for our... Um, Dreads, so we have as many swamps in the deck as possible. We also want all the breeding pools giving us access to as many untapped green sorcerers as possible for the turn one ladder elves. But against the modern red deck, having so many shock lands can definitely be pretty costly. So is it even worth it to play a Leafkin Druid here? I guess since we have so many five drops in hand, we kind of just want the mana acceleration. But taking two is also definitely a cost, especially if we're gonna maybe take another two in the near future. It's probably still worth it here, though. Like, the way we win this game is just by going off with either Tatiova or Yarok. And in the grand scheme of things, taking two doesn't really matter there. Now, blocking is bad if they maybe have a shock. But that's also a shock that's maybe not killing a Risen Reef. And we would prevent one damage. And we're not letting them enable Spectacle this way as well. So, probably expect to see... Alright, Infuriate, so... Opponent may be on a slightly different build of Monorant here with a Pump Spell. Fair enough. Well, we still trade it for a card. Again, gonna have to take two, which doesn't feel good, but... Uh... Find a Growth Spiral, so... We're slowly working our way up towards these five drops. Drawing three of them is not great. But uh, Yarok does have lifelink, so if we do manage to stick him, might be able to offset some of the life we lost to our lands. And opponent's not gonna joke around with this Risen Reef, showing a lot of respect. And Krenko. Krenko is bad news, although not a Risen Reef is useful. I think we're just playing it instead of gross spiraling here. Alright, perfect. So next turn, hopefully Risen Reef is still around and we get to play Yarok, giving us two elemental triggers.
I'll light up the stage. Surely finds an answer for Risen Reef. And there's a lightning strike. Alright. Well. We're not gonna get any value from this Yarok. But next turn we could play Tatiova, play lands and gain a bit of life back. Definitely gonna have to play Yarok here, just have a good blocker for Krenko. Opponent did go through pump spells and burn spells already, plus if they pump Krenko we still have Death Touch to trade off even though they'll end up with a bunch of Goblin tokens. Opponent playing Scorch Spitter as well makes me maybe think they could be playing a build with the uh, two mana enchantments instead of your typical mono red deck where the one power creatures matter. So Cavalcade of Calamity could be in their deck somewhere. So if they have another Infuriate, they could respond to the Krenko trigger by pumping it. Or they just have a burn spell to maybe finish off Yarok. Let's find out. I think we still have to make this block. Alright, just a lightning strike, it's not too bad. So our opponent's got some goblins. Score spitters. Escape shifts. Alright, the plot thickens. So we could go Tatiova play land, we could again play Yarok, sandbag the land, to then go Tatiova play land next turn. I think I'm just liking playing Yarok and passing without playing the land to save it for Tatiova, even though Escape Shift maybe wants us to deploy additional lands so we can get a Field of the Dead and make a few 2-2 zombies. It's definitely a close call, but Yarok just lines up so much better against any pump spells or burn spells they might have, as opposed to Tatiova. So if we can keep our creature in play for a turn that would be nice. If they have a Cavalcade, I'm guessing we're dead here, as we would take 9 damage before getting a chance to block. No Cavalcade. We're gonna gain 3 up to 10, and then still take 6. Alright, we're not dead yet. Chandra Spitfire, also definitely a sign that a Cavalcade of Calamity is in their deck. Alright, so well, Yarok is in play, that's good. And we found a Risen Reef, which is nice, but I think we prefer playing Tatiova and playing a uh, Catacomb afterwards. So we gain two, draw two. And uh, we're not gonna attack. So we're dead to a whole bunch of spells. If we get to survive one more turn, we kind of get to go off here with the Scape Shifts and the Tatiova. We even get to play Risen Reef beforehand as well. So opponent really needs to kill us this turn, otherwise they could be in trouble. Just gonna be a Krenko. And an attack with everyone. Oh, I guess we forgot about the Spitfire Spitter interaction as well, pumping the Spitfire. Actually, we might be dead anyway. Yeah, we're taking 8 and gaining 3, so we're ex dead exactly here. Yeah, I forgot this also triggers from the Scorch Spitter here. Oh well, it's a good interaction to know about. Oh well, it's too bad. So we needed one more life, and then we would have been stable. Oh well, close game. Just took a bit too much damage from our shock lands at the start of the game. And pretty clunky opening hand here with three of our six five drops. But I don't think we're mulliganing since we have the Lanner Elves to maybe speed things up a little bit. Although we are also on the draw. Yeah, maybe this is a mulligan after all. On the play, maybe I could keep this. On the draw, we can probably do better. Nah, this is much better. And what do we put on the bottom? So we do want to have some mana creatures to ramp out this Tatiova, so we can play Tatiova, play a land in the same turn. But it also means we want a lot of lands. 
I guess I'm okay putting a land on the bottom so we can go turn one laterals, turn two druids, and then turn three. I guess we still can't quite play Tatiova and play lands to draw a card. The Watery Grave has a Swamp for Dread Presence and we need Breeding Pool to let us play Lanarals on turn one. And the Temple letting us cry seems better than an untapped land in this spot. Back up Tatiova, so now we're less worried about running out Tatiova as soon as possible. Right, found a land, that's good. Yeah, so we can just play Leafkin, play Temple, that's fine. And don't need another Watery Grave. What we're looking for here, Risen Reef, uh, Yarok, Scape Shifts. And there's Risen Reef. Sapun keeping up for mana, pretty suspicious here. Frilled Mystic seems like a pretty obvious card for them to have. Don't really want to get Tatiova countered, don't really want to get Risen Reef countered. Doing nothing also seems bad. I guess we give them the Risen Reef. Alright, no counterspell, that's good. We do want to kind of keep lands in hand to an extent for Tatiova. But I guess we don't have to put a land in play with Growth Spiral if we don't want to. So I'll play this untapped, and then I'll fire off the Gross Spiral end of turn. But I'm not necessarily going to put the Swamp in play. Nissa, alright. So we'll take three. Alright, so I guess we'll put this in play. Keep Swamp in hand for Dread Presence. Now the Druid makes double green. Not a Risen Reef, sadly. Can't play that one, but we can play Lanner Elves. Don't really want to trade the Risen Reef for Paradise Druid here. So next turn we can potentially draw a lot of cards if we hit some lands with these Risen Reef triggers. Although Nissa on the other side is pretty scary too. Ooh, Gargos. So maybe our point on Hydra Tribal here. The land for us. So yeah, beating Nissa is going to be a challenge. It's probably going to involve drawing a Dread Presence or Escape Shifts. All right, Bias and Sidra, I like it. We'll take three from the land. Hopefully they're out of curve toppers here. All right, just adapt incubation druids. Ooh, all right, time to get some Risen Reef value. And we just want to hit lands here. Alright, play another Risen Reef. There's Yarok. Play more Leafkin Druids. So we're definitely going off. Dread Presence is great, and Escape Shift, so we've got everything rolled up, just need to survive this next turn. For now we can play a land, draw a card, play another Leafkin Druid, and make a zombie. So we should have all the tools to win next turn, or at least set us up for a win. Let's see if we can survive this turn though. 
uh, laterals can go, and I guess growth spiral can go, and what else? I guess maybe don't need another Tatiova. So we can easily chump Gargos. Although the Biosense Hydra has trampled, so that's a bit of a an issue here. We'll see. Don't really mind if they tap out for a big Hydra. Not a Biosense Hydra, that's fine. Thanks with all. Alright, so... The zombies we don't really care about. So that's an easy chump. Chump here. So right now we're taking 6, 8, 20. I guess we don't need all the leafkin roots here, so we're fine blocking here, blocking here. So right now we have us taking a 9 plus 6 is 15. So we need to block one more. Um, I guess we could block like this. That makes more sense. Keep all the Risen Reefs. Yeah, this seems fine. Just prevent the most damage we can. Although maybe it's actually safer to block the lands here, since if they somehow find a way to fight the blockers from the Bioessence Hydra, this would trample over. Whereas here at least we make sure to prevent the 3 damage, so I guess this makes more sense. So yeah, we just take 12 here basically. Hope they don't have any pump spells. Seems fine. Alright, do we get to untap? We do. If we can, we want to get double Dread Presence in play and the Arok and then Scape Shift, but that's going to be difficult here. How much mana do we have? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 if we play a land. So... Yeah, we can play Yarok, play Dread Presence, play Scape Shifts. I guess that's the way to go. 5, 8... Yeah, we don't have the mana to also play Risen Reef. So we'll play Yarok. Hmm, probably messed up here. Sh should have definitely played the Dread Presence first, in case we revealed some swamps of the, the Yarok here. But that's fine. Should be okay. Alright. Some more Risen Reef triggers. Hostage Taker is going to be pretty good too. So yeah, we did get punished for not playing Dread Presence first, but that's fine. And yeah, we would have gotten two Dread Presence triggers, doubled by Yarok. So we missed out on 8 damage already. We'll play the Dread Presence now. 16 cards remaining. I don't even know if we have a ton of lands left in our deck for the Scape Shift. But uh, I guess we still want to play it here. So I'll play the... Let's see. Just play a Swamp. So let's read Gargos one more time. This is only when a creature becomes a target. Yeah, I'm not confident we can actually kill the opponent since we already have so many swamps in play, but I think I'm still going to go for the face and see how that works out. Alright, opponent just concedes, fair enough. Yeah, we would also have to be careful to not deck ourselves with the Tatiova in play, since if we get too many lands, Tatiova is not a May ability, so it would potentially just draw too many cards and uh, loses the game on the spot. But I guess we can kind of stack the abilities, so we deal damage from Dread Presence first, and then draw the cards from Tantiova. So we would still manage to kill the opponent with the Dread Presence triggers before actually dying from the Tantiova. But yeah, once this deck kind of goes off like that, it's pretty difficult to stop. 
but uh, definitely a bit of a sequencing mistake there by not playing the Dread Presence first, since uh, we ended up revealing two swamps from the Risen Reef triggers, which would have also gotten doubled by a Yarok in play. So that's um, potentially eight damage that we missed out on, which is quite a bit, but we likely would have still managed to uh, win the game there. All right, so we managed to show off the deck going off with Dread Presence and Yarok, which was all I wanted to do here. So yeah, the deck's pretty cool, a lot of fun to play. Uh, might not be kind of the optimal build yet, but I've been relatively happy with it so far. Don't have a ton of interaction outside of Dread Presence, dealing damage to creatures and Planeswalkers, and Hostage Taker stealing opposing creatures. We're basically just trying to ramp and get as much value and lands in play as possible, and the deck is pretty good at doing so. And then of course, Scape Shift for the combo kill is pretty sweet as well. Try to fit in as many swamps as possible while still having a functioning mana base. But the mana base again could use maybe a little bit more fine tuning, but seems to be doing the trick so far. And the two scry lands kind of to diversify the lands for Field of the Dead as well as providing a bit of card selection have been pretty useful so far, but I could see cutting them in favor of more untapped lands. So yeah, that was Sultai Dreadshift, a pretty nice combo deck, thanks to M20 giving this deck a ton of new tools to work with, of course. All right. So, let's crack a pack here. A mythic wild card. All right. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.